Good morning, everyone. Our respected head of Defar Department, Dr. S. N. Zaure, our esteemed faculty member, Miss um, Meena Zope, ma'am, my dear students, and our guest of honor. With uh, as we step into a momentous milestone, the college's Silvi Silver Jubilee celebration kicks off with an exhilarating alumni coffee and conversations event. It's time to reminisce and celebrate the journey of our institution over the past 25 years now. With hearts filled with pride and nostalgia, we welcome back our esteemed alumni whose achievements have adorned our alma mater's legacy. I would request Ms. Meenal Zopa ma'am to say a few words. As this is the beginning of uh, our silver jubilee year of our institute, uh, on behalf of AISSMF IOIT and our alumni association, I welcome Pradnya. It is our uh, esteem alumni uh, cell student. Uh, yeah. So uh, now I request Aure Madam to felicitate Pradnya. This gathering is a testament to the enduring bond that connects us all, bridging the gap between the past the present and the future. We're all gathered here to honor one of our accomplished alumni, a pass out of 2005 batch, Ms. Pratna Patan. She has achieved a remarkable success and distinction in her career, making us all very immensely proud to have her as a part of her esteemed institution's legacy. With a diverse background and insatiable curiosity, she embarked on a professional journey that has taken her through a myriad of roles and experiences, leaving an indelible mark in each field she ventured into. Okay, so she holds a degree from IIM Bangalore. I'll be briefing about her journey and her education. And her professional journey includes roles in prestigious firms such as BNY Mellon, Caliber Mindware Programming, and We Construct. She served as the Vice President of Product Technology in Barclays before transitioning into her current role as Remote Work Leadership Expert. With strong commitment to team empowerment, and performance enhancement, she stands out in achieving engineering goals, revenue maximization, and the implementation of optimal practices. Her unparalleled skills consist seamless delivery, agile project management, and unmatched proficiency in design reviews. Ma'am, would you like to say a few words? Yeah, I'm a bit overwhelmed. At the same time, uh, very much delighted. Uh, I mean, feeling nostalgic rather when I entered uh, the premises. So, few days back, uh, uh, I have been here uh, for the alumni event uh, where I got to meet my teachers and some of my classmates. And uh, I just like got into that memory lane. You know, I have really fond memories of my college life. And I'm really uh, glad to have this opportunity to interact uh, with, you know, the latest batches uh, and, yeah, I'm really excited, you know, to share my career wisdom with you guys. And I'm, I would like to thank uh, Professor P.B. Mane, sir, and uh, Jaure, madam, Meenal, madam, Shaila, sir, and uh, everybody uh, for inviting me here. Thank you so much. Uh, let's start live. Can you please tell us how do you feel to be back here? Yeah, so I mean the first thing you know which I remember is like we used to call our college as Lal Kila. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean first time yeah when I wanted to locate the college, okay, I would tell them hey, you know what, uh, just spot that airplane, okay, wherever you see the airplane, that's where my college is. And personally, like you know, I had this childhood dream of you know like I wanted to be a pilot. So uh, plane is something which is very close to my heart. And uh, not only that, so I think I would say college has given me the wings to fly, just like an airplane. Uh, and uh, I think we have a very rich, uh, rich legacy because uh, our uh, uh, institution has been founded by uh, the descendants of uh, Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, like who had like you know such a grand vision. Uh, you know, it was like uh, a big part of a bigger mission uh, to serve the society, and you know, in turn, like which uh, should result in welfare of everybody. And I'm really glad uh, to see, you know, the way uh, our management committee 
as well as uh, principal sir and all the teachers are uh, like you know carrying out that legacy and that mission uh, to create like you know future professionals engineering professionals so i'm really i feel very proud uh, you please be seated comfortably <laughs> So, how was your experience back then with the college? I mean, I have enjoyed my engineering the most. Like I'll tell you, because uh, I mean, I have been very sincere student. You know, like uh, till I think till tenth, I was uh, most sincere. Next two years, yeah, little less. Engineering is like so. Uh, what I did is like gradually. Uh, I think uh, more than studies, I started focusing on uh, extra curricular activities. because like my parents they are not they, they were not very specific about the, my marks but they always wanted me uh, to be that you know multi dimensional personality where they encourage me you know to uh, like experiment and you know so they asked me to participate in each and every activity uh, so because they wanted me uh, to be a well rounded individual and i have experimented a lot you know like i'll tell you in my first year i was very sincere like okay i was like only studies you know have to get good grades and i really got good grades okay first year so then okay second year i was like okay i have great marks <laughs> let me experiment <laughs> so then i i did lot of like started participating in um, uh, this you know project uh, competitions and like you know uh, paper presentation so basically uh, at that point i felt that okay engineering should not be all about theory so i should be you know like exploring the practical aspects of it and uh, i i enjoyed that more like i loved programming a lot so i didn't like theory subjects much but yeah i could like okay i focused you know so that i understand the basic concepts but i really loved learning uh, like implementing my learnings and experimenting so i did you know lot of uh, i mean participated in you know paper presentation and like um this project implementation and you even remember we had a uh, science day celebration also annual gathering so i remember you girls and the faculty as well fully participating in each and every event <laughs> at that time yes <laughs> yes ma'am it was a lot of fun um so because like i'm a, i love arts and music so I also like you know participated. I just pushed myself into acting. Like though I, I know I, I was not that you know good actor, but I was like oh, I want to try it once. So I participated in, in the push show, the Pyodhya Kananda, and then uh, I was magazine secretary as well. So thanks to like you know my uh, teachers like Minal Madam, Sheila Sir, Desh Pandey Sir. So all of them they encouraged me a lot, you know, uh, to. Uh, participate uh, in those activities and uh, for me it was like fun because okay if i have to get magazine sponsors it's like uh, it's going to take me away from my regular studies but i'll be doing something exciting okay it's convincing somebody to sponsor my magazine is a different experience so i like really enjoyed a lot but i'll tell you my score suffered in <laughs> second or third year i'll be very honest i was like uh, you know not uh, getting my first class <laughs> and uh, So that's why, like you know, uh, I think yeah, Sheila sir. Uh, so he was like very. He used to ask me, okay, how much you know marks you got, and at one point he told me that okay, you are doing all this is good, but make sure you also have a good score. And then finally, I, I I like you know really try to balance it out. Okay, like I I wanted to have all the fun with you know gatherings and all, but then yeah, uh, finally I was um, uh, able to get a good score. I would say. I think final year something sticks in our mind that. अभी तो करना ही है करेक्ट अम ओके सो सिंस यू हैव डन सो मच कैन यू जस्ट टेल अस अबाउट योर फेवरेट मेमोरी फ्रॉम योर टाइम इन आई अम सो आई थिंक आई हैव मेनी मेमोरीज बट लाइक यू नो लाइक डूइंग गोइंग फॉर दैट ऑडिशन फॉर द पुरुषोत्तम करंडक एंड लाइक यू नो प्रैक्टिसिंग द लाइक प्लेस एंड यू नो डायलॉग्स एंड देन रियली परफॉर्मिंग ऑन दैट डे सो दैट वाज like you know something i like i still remember vividly uh because uh, like we we none of us were professionals so we just like tried to you know approach somebody so they we had some senior students i think dipti bopatkar yeah she also had lot of interest in you know like the plays and acting so she got uh, like introduced to somebody who was doing professional plays so we used to get some guidance from them and then you know like just try to do it on our own 
but that is something i still you know remember fondly I would say the most important thing is uh, that loving bond I had with my teachers, right? So see, eighteen years have passed, you know, since I left college, but I still uh, I am very much connected to my teachers, like right? you know, Minal Madam, Sheila Sir, even our librarian Prashant Singh Chinde Sir. So I mean, like though we don't may not meet physically, uh, frequently, uh, even Nutan Madam. So but. Uh, we know that we share that bond, and like if I you know share something like which I have accomplished, like they are the people who like you know congratulate me first, and they are really happy about my progress. So it is something beyond words. I would say it's not uh, about you know it's not about only knowledge, but uh, the goodwill and you know kind of like great intentions uh, they had and that vision you know the the tr- kind of trust they put in me in my you know abilities. i still challenging me to achieve more right so that is something uh, i still remember fondly and that, that bond still exists you know? so i am really i feel great about it have you stayed connected with any of your peers since graduate yes yes i have made some great lifetime lifelong friends so i remember like you know uh, my batchmate uh, jyotsna chavan so she is uh, working with cognizant uh, as a senior manager and uh, darshana kulkarni uh, aparna kulkarni and many of my batchmates so i have made lifelong friends and you can't even imagine like uh, same like you know i may not meet them very frequently but uh, yeah we we were working together uh, for four years in cognizant and we are still in touch and like sometimes you know there are things i may not share you know with with everybody but which i would share with sir jyotsna and she would still you know give me that nice advice so the level of you know trust and the bonding is totally different you know with your like i'm sure you can also resonate with your co- school and college friends the level of bonding we have is a next level totally i agree with that so um let's start with a little bit of industrial questions now okay so can you tell us a little about your professional journey and how you got started uh, in your current field sure uh, so when i passed out i started as a developer and i started working with the uh, .net technologies uh, as a web developer uh, and then slowly i transitioned into like you know so i experimented with you know uh, different roles so i was very good technically so people they they were you know ready ready to give me more responsibility so i became a module lead with yard and then uh, got into a team lead role with cognizant but then i had that uh, spirit you know kid of experimentation that okay now i am bored uh, i want to do something different so then i i also like did a kind of a business analyst role while i was with cognizant uh and then like you know at every point i just kept on experimenting like okay uh, after you know couple of years i felt okay this yes i am earning more yeah i have you know whatever status but then uh, it doesn't fulfill me so i want to do something else so i just kept on uh, reinventing myself i took lot of risk but you know like every time i am taking on a new role uh like same goes with my you know current role so cuz i have been in that growing steadily in the uh, technology leadership so i was like uh, currently i am working with barclays uh, as a vp where uh, like you know my role is more into technology project management and uh, the you know handling the engineering metrics stakeholder management but at one point especially during pandemic i felt that uh, i am missing something uh, and this does not fulfill me Yes, I am very skilled at it. I am good at it. Uh, but uh, my soul, uh, like you know, is saying, okay, you need to do uh, in some other direction. So I just like I did lot of experimentation and you know I did lot of exploration. Uh, so I have been on that journey since last one and half year, and that's how like you know I started my journey. Like I'll be starting my journey as an entrepreneur. so uh, that's a great question um, i think p- people uh, they like safety and stability but i am total opposite because i just get bored i mean yeah i like safety for some time but then uh, uh, yeah i just get bored and i'm like always you know i want to do something new okay so something that i have not done before uh, okay so and ultimately 
it pushes me to acquire new skills so let's say if i'm a uh, into development and if i want to become a business analyst i have to be really great at you know stakeholder communication and you know like understanding their priorities uh, handling any escalations so uh, i think that's what motivates me that hey you know this is going to uh, require me to go out of my comfort zone and to learn some new skills which i have not learned before and um, another factor is uh, actually i i'm a, like i love people actually i mean wherever i go i uh, create great bonds i mean uh, you know like so even some of my colleagues are like you know, they have become long time friends so uh, wherever i feel uh, that sense of belonging that like, i belong here and we have a positive uh, interactions we have positive connections even with my bosses mentors i tend to stay longer over there but wherever i feel it's missing like i my soul really craves that connection so then i just like okay time to go somewhere else okay i may not belong here it's fine yeah so you have a strong presence in a tech industry so how did you become an interested in technology and its applications like what was the what was the thing that motivated you to do it it uh, actually my father is a like a professor of psychology so uh, and uh, i think that's why like what we uh, we have gone through a proper aptitude testing like after 10th me and my brother so he put us through the aptitude testing like which tells you which are the natural abilities you have and you might explore, uh, you know uh, excel in them uh, so uh, my like i have been very fortunate as in like my parents they always gave me lot of freedom to experiment but they said it it's also it comes with great responsibility okay you make your choice but then you also take responsibility of that result okay do whatever you want but then be ready to face the consequences you know that was like their mantra parents support is the contribution really needed for this career so uh, and then that the test said okay i can i could either become an architect or an engineer so i thought oh, if i become an engineer there will be more chance uh, for me to explore and experiment that's how i decided yeah. so what are some of the major challenges you faced in your career it's a great question uh, uh, because i'll tell you i mean when we are student uh, like our attitude is totally different because when you are student like uh, the wh- what is that teachers value the teachers they value your obedience your sincerity right your hard work and all that is great when you are a student but when you go into corporate you need to learn a different skills because uh, same things may may not be valued in that environment so and for me like uh, it was a long journey it took me a lot of time uh, really you know to understand uh, this reality because i had this you know rose colored glasses that i would be exactly i'll tell you i i used to behave just like a student <laughs> yes sir i do <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> yeah so and actually that that is good as long as you are student and even if i'm i'm still learning i consider myself as a lifelong learner so if i'm entering some room as a student i should have that attitude okay i still value that but context is very important so the moment if you know i enter a corporate office or corporate meeting uh, my mindset has to change and you know i have to be i interact and you know my my attitude everything has to change so it took me a lot of time to understand you know like because you need different skills to excel in corporate like you need uh, very good uh, interpersonal skills you need to understand the power dynamics right the who's who you need to build a strategic relationships uh, with key people and i was like very much introvert you know like i was just sit there and somehow like i had this thought that okay if i i can write great programs and you know i can like work hard give her on time and that's how i am going to grow and really like you know it was like it took me some time to get you know into the reality zone so um, as we all know networking is uh, an essential part of professional growth so how do you maintain and nurture your professional uh, network what is that mean yeah that's a great question actually um, i would say if you are an extrovert uh, if you go like you like to go out and meet people 
uh, you make an effort at least you know try to attend at least two networking events in in your industry so try to go and physically meet and you know like you can put a bit of an effort and you know go and introduce yourself so that will like initially you may feel little discomfort with that but uh, you never know because uh, most of the professionals are very generous like you know they are very much you know open uh, when it comes to sharing their knowledge and uh, their guidance you just have to approach them so that's what i, I have been doing like i am a big introvert so i have a hard time you know like if i have to approach somebody and speak to them uh, but i still try to do it because uh, it has really opened up like a uh, huge uh, amount of possibilities for me as in uh, i got introduced to uh, people who became my great mentors like lifelong mentors yeah so i think this is something you uh, have to do consciously uh, and but at the same time like because this is what i i was doing early earlier you know like if somebody like you who is starting your career should definitely make an effort but right now i have become very choosy okay <laughs> now i am like okay if my vibe is matching you know with that person that's when you know i'll connect with them i still be nice to them as in yeah i'll be but i'll be little professional and maybe detached yeah so <laughs> i think your decision was right to be an engineer <laughs> you have chosen architect architect it would be like a straight path but as you are an engineer and we are exploring many different things like technology management everything so i think your path you are chosen as engineer i think that has proven you no the different opportunities to explore yes yes definitely like it's i mean amazing you know the way like you know engineers path. are in every field means from actors and uh, every everything we can see engineers Okay. definitely I, i totally agree with you and like the engineer will have some x factor even if he is, becomes an actor or a singer there will be you know some x factor with, uh, with an engineer so in your opinion what are the most exciting things that you have learned in the past uh i would say everybody is uh, you know much aware of it right now uh, because like uh, ai is a thing right so uh, i want you know uh, talk about that because i know you guys are smart and you know we have madam she's you know heading the department like in the madam so i'm sure and like it's everywhere right in the news but i'll tell you something that is uh, more important than technology okay so i think uh, you should know at least one technology very well okay because if you know one thing well you can very easily uh, pick up anything else so for an engineer right easily in one or two weeks you you can get working knowledge of anything so i would say don't focus on you know don't get attached to particular technology because that is something you can really learn fast as an engineer i know that from my experience but uh, i think if you uh, look at the current scenario we all know that uh, ai is capable of doing so many things ai can auto generate the code and even it can create pictures write poems what do whatever we want right so what is it so we have to ask ourselves what is it that, that differentiates me from the machine auto generated thing right so it comes down to more human qualities uh, such as uh, our creativity even our personality energy uh, maybe uh, anything that makes you unique uh, right your hobby maybe you are into arts or you love sports uh, okay or maybe you are into archaeology anything spirituality so what happens is i think the the most important uh, differentiator you can have is uh when you are interested in multiple things you automatically bring in new perspectives so let's say uh and even glo- i think awareness of global affairs is is another you know important criteria apart from the sustainability so right now like i'm sure like everybody ke- is caring more and more about uh, mother earth and you know the, the green economy basically right so uh basically you we should be able to uh, connect the dots across multiple things and you should learn how to apply knowledge in one area into other area so let's say if i love music and maybe i love writing how can i apply it in my you know it career so similarly i'm sure each one of you like each everybody is born with some unique talents uh, just that uh, we should not you know like uh, so we have to expand our horizon basically should not only stick to you know okay uh, if i'm a technologist i'll only you know learn technical articles okay It's, it's much better that you know you be aware of like what's going on in the world and be interested and be implement multiple skills and that way your learning will automatically 
you apply it everywhere. That's what will differentiate you. So now, amidst uh, multiple roles, like you said, you're working as a vice president at Barclays, and you're also transi transitioning into an entrepreneur. So, how do you maintain work and life balance also while doing multiple projects and interests of your own? Yeah, so that's a another great question. Uh, so, in fact, you know, uh, when like the pandemic hit, and when we started working remotely, uh, that's when I really, you know, uh, had the real balance. I would say because all these years I have been like you know working twelve hours, fourteen hours, you know, like working late for US clients, right? Uh, I'm taking pride, you know, in that my hard work, <laughs> right, and in my achievements, whatever. But then uh, uh, during pandemic, when we started working from home, so I, I really like got to experience the two, you know, simple joys of life. Just like you know, looking at sunset. Yeah, I've been working so long with US clients. I never looked at the sunset seriously. <laughs> Even like you know, having a, a good talk, uh, having having nature walks with my school friends. So one of the like uh, favorite things I I enjoyed during COVID is like I had a school friend from my same hometown. So every day we would go for a you know on the hill for walk and we would just spot kingfishers. So and uh, it really gave me a lot of energy. And because I I would come back and then I'll again you know start working. So uh, in remote work there's a uh, concept of uh, asynchronous communication and non-linear time. So non-linear time is something like you don't work nine to five straight, but then maybe you will work let's say to if you are a you know early riser you will work eight to ten. You'll finish more, most of the important stuff. Then maybe you know next next two hours you might go for swimming or you know any sports, and then again you will maybe work in afternoon and just important at, you know uh, attend the important meetings. So you have a lot of flexibility, wherein uh, you can uh, have that kind of balance. You know which you're saying. So rather like you know there's also a concept of uh, work life integration, wherein like you just integrate. You know like uh, you mix it up. But at the same time, you try to balance. You know, let's say you you want to drop your kids, uh, so you work for two two hours before, but then you make sure you drop them. You come back, you again work. So I think earlier uh, we had this concept of work life balance, wherein you know we had this concept that okay, you know I'll I'm going to work nine to five, not exactly nine to five. It's going to be let's say nine to eight uh, if you are in IT. You know that right? But I think remote work has uh, given us that flexibility. Wherein we can live full life, and that's what that's why I uh, decided to become a remote work expert. Because I really rediscovered myself. I felt so joyful. I I, I can uh, spend more time on my singing practice, on my painting, right? Things that give me true joy, and then automatically I bring in that positive energy into the work, and it like it is positively impacting my uh, delivery as well. And at the same time, I can have good family time. So that's what you know I like. Uh, there is one thing. There is one thing I would like to ask that uh, you have spent a lot uh, in IT industry and you are really familiar with a lot of people. You have made a lot of connections. I would like to ask one question that as an aspiring, like uh, I am mean, a final year engineering student. So, what should be the right time to take the risk in life? Because everybody, uh, not everybody is trying to aspire for entrepreneurship. But as a as an engineering student uh, right now, we have a lot of startups in Maharashtra, Bangalore, and all. So I would like to ask that what should be the right time to take the risk? I mean, you have seen a lot of people. So what are your experiences about it? Uh, it would be really nice if you would like to share. Thank you. Uh, so when you say taking risk, like uh, do you mean trying out adventure sports or you mean starting your company? Because yeah, taking risk is in every aspect, like starting your own company and uh, uh, like taking a high risk about like uh, doing something which is really risky. Like it can cost uh, your, your valuable time and all. Uh, like, uh, like, okay, I'm just like developing now. So uh, I would be developing software. But what if I thought that I should make my own company, develop software of my own, uh, do something very unconventional, like the road which is not taken by everybody. So what should be the right time? Because everybody would like to uh, get a life. Uh, like uh, everybody would like to settle, like uh, for, uh, marriage and kids and all. But uh, there are many people who think about doing something out of the box. So, what should be the right time to do that? Right time is now. <laughs> Seriously, because uh, see, when you are younger, you can experiment more. You can take risks because once you have a family, you have to you know think about everybody. So, 
let's say you know in in, in your 30s like if you're getting married right uh, and then you'll you'll have a lot of constraints because you have to you know think about your kids uh, spouse and you know everybody that what are their needs so i would say this is the right time to take risk when you even when you are in your 20s and 30s uh, take maximum risk because uh, what happens is like as you get older your risk appetite is going to reduce right and even if you want to you won't be able to take risk and then people also get addicted to comfort zone myself included you see like it to uh, it took me so many years right uh, to like start my entrepreneurship journey so i you know this is my second attempt by the way like i tried you know 3 years back and i failed so i would say uh, you know this is the time to take risk and i'll tell you uh, because of you know like uh, the trend of you know remote and hybrid work uh, it has opened up new opportunities especially like you know for, for the students so it has given rise to gig economy wherein you can do a job which gives you certain amount of financial security and at the same time you can work on some side hustle and you can see like you know just there are so many jobs like on fervor and you know up up this upwork so you can uh, find out lot of freelancing opportunities so i would say uh, you can you know take do your job and then in parallel you just try to you know do some freelancing and then see you know where it takes you because doing job is equally important i'll tell you because uh, it gives you exposure to the real world problems like what are you know the clients really facing right now what are the problems that organization or, or your current team is facing so it gives you that uh, realistic context so doing job is important but i would say it's something you can do in parallel and when you uh, you see that you are uh, ready, uh, you are making money you are making enough generating enough revenue out of it then you can think of going it into it full time but any risk you want to take take it now uh, how do you balance work and life because that is one of the important crucial factors because we are working in a tech field and we can see the engineers are are uh, us brothers and sisters are working day and night on the laptops okay so how do you think that we should balance our work and life yeah again uh, that's a great question and uh, like i'll be very honest here i struggled with my work life balance for so many years uh because you know i was in it like you know as i said so uh like i'll tell you like, what i have learned you know after so many years see the first and uh, i'll give you a little secret of mine here see you really need to understand what is the high income skill right now in the market and you learn that okay you don't have to be jack of all trades okay you don't have to learn each and every damn technology even though recruiters will ask you do you okay they'll give you a list of 20 things and but you really i'll tell you you don't have to learn those 20 things you just identify just you know uh, go on pay scale and find out okay let's say i cloud architect okay how how much you know uh, what's the pay scale for uh, you know full stack developer what's the pay scale you decide something that you are passionate about and at the same time that is high paying okay and you just be expert in that okay if you do that what will happen is you i mean initially yeah, it it will there will be some learning curve but once you become an expert you might it does of job in 4 hours or 6 hours and that will ultimately give you work life balance right that is first second is uh, having the boundaries okay see as i said right we we are taught to be more agreeable right even our parents like you know they like it when we say yes yes we will right so part of the deal is uh, saying no uh, to things and but that before that you have to be clear uh, what is it that you value in life right what are your top 3 to 5 values and then anything you want to do you should ask yourself does it align with my top values or is like what is it that i am seeking here is it giving me some joy or some growth or you know is it in alignment with my values and my long term goals if yes only accept those things just say no to rest of the things and then your life will be so much simpler so initially people will be upset with you your family members included ultimately see if you are happy and satisfied they will automatically be happy and satisfied so it takes a like, certain practice i would say hmm. yeah uh, this is a great question uh, by the way and uh, yeah i really 
uh, i think yeah actually my father he was a social worker so i think that is something you know like uh, which i have it as a family value so um, i've been like doing it consciously as in uh, of course like you know in terms of contributing to certain charities uh, i also like you know try to part- give lot of uh, free guidance free coaching uh, to the students so like i am a consultant so yeah i might charge you know for, for clients but yeah, if somebody is a student and you know if they are uh, looking for a you know career guidance so i just like yeah try to uh, do it for free and uh, yeah i've also learned uh, pranic healing so i also participate in the camps like you know the healing camps wherein like we do it as an act of service yeah and been connected to like lot of ngos wherein like if they have any campaigns like right, tree plantation or something else like that is benefiting the society so i try to do that that's great um so in a challenging situation that you uh, happen to you know have at work and how you tackle that like something that you have experienced one particular challenge start out in your career you really made a difference in you after you knew from your childhood yeah that's a great question again and uh, i would say there are many challenges you know i have experienced and i am still you know experiencing new challenges every day but uh, i would like to share something that i want you to learn from an embody okay so uh, one of the challenges like which i felt is uh, like you know understanding you know the because uh, as i was this you know introvert obedient kind of personality uh, i had you know hard time you know understanding like power dynamics politics at work right and uh, what i've learned is like uh, so i'll not you know uh, say any uh, like put any names here but yeah i was part of you know a, a global bank and then uh, i had a boss but then uh, he was kind of you know uh, trying to micromanage me so even if you know i i know that you know i am doing the part you know doing the work so he like uh, we had this two year project and which he was forcing us to complete it in eight months time right and then uh, really asking us you know to work on weekends you know uh, keeping the tab okay how much break you took and all right so that uh, at one point like it was like a mental torture for me right and uh, i still see like lot of uh, people right in my uh, it field who face similar challenges but then uh, in it your leader is like a king right so he can do whatever he wants like yeah. and then you can't do much about it uh, but i would say uh, standing up for yourself speaking up for yourself without fear that is the first thing you know which you can start practicing and it is something that takes a lot of courage and confidence in yourself in your abilities but uh, that is something i would really i'm consciously sharing it with you because i would like you guys to do the same speak up for yourself if you are not comfortable uh, feel free to uh, like speak up if they uh, take corrective action great if no feel free to leave that project leave that organization so what did i so i did the same like i you know i spoke up and then i am a very you know peace loving person okay, i don't like conflict it gave me a lot of trauma because i don't like conflict but then i learned a big lesson you know that sometimes i just you know simply change my department and one year of time like i progress like anything i got promotion and my new boss was so happy uh, he gave me like lot of uh, awards and appreciation and i was like why i was working you know with uh, that kind of a leader for two years right i was just tor- torturing myself and unnecessary you know putting up uh, with things which i shouldn't have so that is the biggest lesson i have learned you know letting go of disrespectful people of course you give them a chance see step number one is you have a honest communication if you are uncomfortable with something feel free to, uh, to speak up hey you, you know what uh, this is not like i feel you know uncomfortable you know when this thing happens and I, i i don't like this whatever you have a, a open communication and see it's a two way street okay um, the way employees need job uh, employees also need sincere employees right so then it has to be a collaborative discussion and sometimes i have seen uh, i have seen leaders who are ready to make constructive changes and which is a really sign of a mature leader if it happens great if it doesn't just you know feel free to leave that company or you know that project or that team whatever i mean it's it's your personal decision but what i've seen is people have certain resistance you know they just get stuck in that toxic situation let's say i have seen like my 
and my classmates they they are not getting promoted for four years and they know they are performing really well and their boss is not you know still uh, allowing them to grow but still why they want to stay there right so that's where you know your risk taking your courage your confidence in yourself that's what becomes important thank you so much i think that was needed to be heard by all of us can i interrupt yeah, yeah. so pradna where you find out yourself is obedient or you are introvert and you want to come out of this things and i have to move from uh, this so what is that point or why do you think that we, maybe sometimes it is good yes uh, being a introvert or being obedient or being loving uh, peace and that but where you find out i have to come out from that uh, ma'am that's a great question and uh, like you know uh, i still uh, because uh, as i said right uh, i like to be that version uh, you know and uh, and i think we we should be that way with people who who uh, are equally loving to us so let's say if i am with you so i know that we have that loving respectful bond so i can be nice with you but when you are in in, in shops right you know when you are let's say in a board meeting and you know like you know everybody has their political agenda and they are trying to put you down and we can sense that right with our intuition uh, that's where this becomes important so i really like it was i mean it took me it was a long journey for me like you know uh, i had multiple uh, painful experiences uh, in my career and also in my personal life uh, about so i used to be that you know very nice obedient girl and uh, last two years i did lot of reflection okay that hey you know what what is going on you know same thing is repeating why you know i am attracting same type of people same type of bosses in my life right why i am doing that so sometimes you have to be reactive yes yes definitely yeah yes ma'am yeah so there's a great book i think yeah stop being pleaser or something uh, i was just you know reading it yesterday and even i recognize okay i still have some <laughs> pleasing things in my in me which i need to let go so uh, after a lot of reflection right uh, first is awareness so i think daily journaling has helped me a lot so every day writing uh, okay what was what is that i learned today what is i like what i didn't like what i'm grateful for so i do daily journaling and then writing gives you a lot of clarity okay so many times we have that uncomfortable feeling with somebody but we just try to uh, cover it under the rug saying thinking that it's okay it's okay but it piles up so i think couple of times it's okay but first is we have to have courage we should let the person know something we don't like about it and then if they value our connection people make changes yeah there are good people people will say sorry or even if you there's something in the rage of the moment but then if somebody is not doing that then uh, i think people speak with actions so I, what i've learned is i should pay attention to their actions you know like not the words right how, how like they are treating me and ultimately how it makes me feel there are certain people who have such a positive aura like you feel energized after being with them and then you know like certain people they will just you know cover mean comments with jokes but it, and it could be in your close circle by the way like you know family friends extended family and you know like right when they uh, make that remark and you know it's disrespectful so i think yeah if you can have a honest conversation great if not just set boundaries yeah, try to be uh, try to limit your time with them because ultimately the cost is like unless we do that we lose ourselves we lose our confidence so we have to make ourselves a priority our own confidence and self esteem that should be our priority so i have learned it hard yeah. way ma'am yeah <laughs> yes yes so uh, i've been very fortunate by the way i met some of my mentors at, at work you know like as i said yeah i i had some bad bosses but there were a lot of good ones yeah, as yeah. well so i i would yeah take few names here so uh, i had this boss uh, nand kishor pawar from cognizant so he really like i learned planning from him like uh, he like, he was a dba so i learned lot of like database optimization another person that stands out is uh, raj dabiru from uh, bnmelon so 
he was my on site uh, uh, like he was a director and you know on site boss and we have never met in person by the way we have only spoken over the phone but he was like he used to recognize you know each and every small thing so what i liked is like he would recognize you know contribution of each and every team member and then he used to guide like you know push me so he said okay pradna you are really good technically you need to get better at your you know communication so why don't you join a toast master club right so he gave me some inputs and then uh, actually and then i i have been you know seeking mentors later on because many times what happens in corporate not everybody would be ready to guide you even if you want them to be they may not like to do that so i would say uh, you should make an effort to connect with people who are uh, from other departments also that is one thing that has benefited me greatly because i was like very open and uh, you know uh, in reaching out to people uh, that's why like you you can look for somebody whom you vibe with you feel comfortable with and right they have that you know uh, energy like so like last two three years i heavily invested into you know mentoring and coaching executive coaching also so uh, my uh, mba professor uh, professor usha ragunath so she has been like you know great mentor uh, to me and it is something that happened very naturally i mean ma'am had been so generous like you know without asking like you know she ha- like, has been like guiding me on, on this journey and i am also learning a uh, running a leadership community Uh, of the you know IMB uh, Bangalore gra- graduates, where we uh, conduct you know sessions uh, on a on some leadership topic on a monthly basis. So because of her, yeah, it gives gave me a different perspective you know on leadership because uh, I mean the way you know she combines like practical stuff with you know the theory part, it's amazing. And yeah, I think I have eight to ten mentors actually. <laughs> it's really important to have a good mentor to know that somebody uh, you know there's someone at your back and you can go to someone for advice personal or professional the other day i remember i was talking to a hod ma'am we were at the laboratory and she was talking to one of my friends about uh, some project that he has to do i was just sitting beside her i was listening to them she also um, talked uh, to me about my projects and uh, helped me discover what other areas that i could go into in order to complete the project Yeah, thank you for that ma'am that's great so please <laughs> i would say uh, ma- maintain that connection nurture yeah. it yeah yeah uh, okay so you've accomplished a lot in your career as we've all heard just now and you are be- you've become an entrepreneur now so is there anything else that you wish to achieve in the future any dreams that you have more left to yourself of course there are many but like something that you absolutely have to achieve in the future i'm like uh, you know every Every three or six months, I have a new idea. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> seriously, I have no doubt of ideas. In fact, I have, I have to learn. Like Ma'am said, I have to learn to focus on you know few things and then get them to completion. That's you know where I like uh, I have to make an effort. So right now, if you ask me, I am like interested in many things, and you know that's the reason I have like decided you know to start my business because it gives me the time and flexibility to experiment. so i really like want to live a peaceful life at this time like i may not work maybe more than 4 hours because i know i have high high income skills i don't have to work like you know 8 hours that's what you know i was telling you to have a good work life balance and the reason i want to work 4 hours is because i love singing i love dancing so this year i started learning kathak because yeah i uh, like to dance singing is something i have been learning on and off uh, so but yeah i love uh, singing and then i also like you know we uh, want to be serious with my uh, spiritual practices that is in meditation prayers like whatever you know we do and also i have lot of interest into healing like uh, you know especially the alternative methods of healing uh, apart from you know like uh, regular like ayurveda or allopathy so i have learned pranic healing and uh, now i want to uh, learn panchatatva healing next so that is something that interests me at this point Yeah. Yes. I'd like to welcome our principal, Dr. P. B. Mane. Hello, sir. um so we have almost come to the end i'm opening the discussion to the audience here so 
So if there is any uh, questions that you guys want to ask the ma'am about industry, you can please go ahead. Are engaged in building their own personal brands. So what advice would you like to give to us? And would you like to tell us about your book? Yeah, sure. So uh, I'm writing a book on uh, on the topic of uh, remote work leadership. Uh, that's my uh, area of research and expertise. So this book is uh, for the mean for the IT leaders uh, who are leading remote teams and who have you know this uh, who face difficulty in the, like you know creating that feeling of belonging, connectivity, and high performance in the remote teams. So my book is uh, uh, designed to give them practical tools and strategies. So that you know they can uh, have high performing teams and still maintain that level of connection. Yeah, that's what you know my book is about. Uh, second question, which you asked about personal brand, uh, I think that's that's very uh, relevant and practical. And I'm glad you asked that question because uh, yeah, for me it took me long time to understand value of a personal brand because uh, I used to shy away from social media, thinking yeah, it's a waste of you know time. However, uh, like since you guys are starting your career, so you Uh, this is something you can do consciously. So I'll give you like some practical things which you can do immediately. Okay, simple things such as you know updating your LinkedIn profile with a professional photo, having a meaningful banner, updating your experience and uh, like your listing out all your uh, awards and uh, your technical skills. Uh, that is uh, you know step number one. Uh, step number two is uh, uh, it also starts with a lot of self awareness. Like first you have to know yourself. Uh, what type of person you are? Like, what are the qualities that you embody? I mean, let's say if you would have been an animal, which animal you would you would be, or which bird you would be, and then what you do is you uh, you create you know that kind of a feeling with your brand. So then uh, it it it's uh, it's also we are also have to be very strategic here. As in, first we should ask what is it that I'm trying to achieve? Okay, what is it that? Uh, Let's say okay, you are building personal brand, but ultimately, what is your aim? Is your aim to build certain business, or is your aim uh, to get your next career opportunity? Right. So accordingly, you have to post that kind of a content, and there is a lot of you know visual audio element, feeling element here. So like uh, you can leverage you know those things to create that uh, uh, brand feeling, and it also starts with the way you dress, by the way, because my, I like. I'll just like give you my own example. So I I am uh, into leadership, but I am a very feminine uh, person. So that's why you know I like pink color. So that's why you know I have chosen it as my primary brand color. If somebody is like let's say very powerful and you know dynamic personality, so and if they have a leadership brand, they might choose navy blue as a color, right? So uh, there are a lot of nuances actually uh, when it comes to personal branding. Uh, so it's all about you know first we you, you have to think what is it that you are trying to achieve who is your target audience and what kind of it's also like yeah being little strategic what kind of perception you want to create right and then how can you combine it with your own personality and traits so that you also remain authentic you remain true to yourself yeah and that's how yeah you build your brand. Because when I look the section of uh, the college section, you know, your achievements that you have um, uh, mentioned each and every small achievement, right from what you have been, which uh, in which activities you participated. Undergraduate, college, yes. also whatever she yes, has done, yes. she has mentioned everything. Everything, miss. We discussed that. Okay. okay, because we are like we also are focusing on building our personal brands. Okay. So we are like, okay, something which we were in search of. Okay, look this profile. It's amazing. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I think uh, you can just you know do the same and uh, feel free to uh, like schedule a call with me. There's a top mid link on my LinkedIn, so I can like tell you like at least you know how to build your profile. So I can do that for sure. It's my way of. It would be my way of giving back to the college. Oh, okay. yes. One question from my side. Uh, actually, out of the flow question, 
for your time it was our institute was the women's college right yes so uh, do you have any regret about that you studied in a women's college not in co education or something <laughs> not at all ma'am actually <laughs> yeah seriously i mean uh, because i i enjoyed my uh, you know college days a lot uh, i never felt that way i think it was more to do with my own personality nothing to do with women college because i was an introvert i took me like you know some practice when it comes to you know like mixing up with everybody in the office so that is something i had to do consciously but uh, i never felt that way ma'am yeah <laughs> so i wanted to ask a question you apparently uh, said that you have some high income skills and you are working only 4 hours a day uh, so you have perfectly achieved that work life balance you wanted to so i wanted to ask that what are those high income skills and what as a beginner we should uh, do to build those skills thank you yeah uh, that's a great question uh, by the way uh, and uh, i'll tell you even this like right now the technology landscape and even global landscape is changing so fast i mean whatever i am saying may not be relevant you know six months down the line but still like i'll just try to give you some timeless skills okay number one is your communication okay uh, as in like having that uh, authoritative presence like uh, having that executive presence like if you I mean, once you enter a room you know getting that feeling that okay this person is somebody important right building that presence and uh, like small things like you know how you dress up and also like it's lot of, lot to do with your mindset also with your thought process you know that is something which will give you an edge uh, so uh, it has to be complemented uh, with great communication skills and by the way uh, communi- uh, before you know uh, many times you know we associate communication skills with vocabulary and you know the way we speak but uh, i'll also tell you there is a lot of uh, good amount of emotional intelligence you need to be a good communicator like if you are you can manage your emotions well and like handle it in a great way then you will be even more powerful communicator right that is number 2 communication skills third is persuasion like you know how 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 to get your influencing skill uh, i would say like how to get people to you know buy into your idea without pushing them and this this is very useful right at home as well as at work like even if it is matter of like presenting your project report and getting good grades from professors to you know like uh, asking permission for something uh, to your parent or you know anything so influence uh, yeah influencing skills right and then this a uh, lot of you know uh, underlying psychological em- element that uh, you know comes into picture here so i would say uh, try to learn as much as you can uh, about human psychology leadership psychology uh, you can just google for you know like top podcast like you know on psychology and uh, that will you know give you an edge because we uh, see we deal with humans right we do business with humans and i tell you humans are very irrational like you know many times the decisions uh, are taken uh, based on emotions and not on the logic so it's all about you know who you trust and who you feel connected to right so yeah i think those are the things you can focus on I have one question. Like uh, when you drifted from uh, your uh, student life to the corporate world, so what all things were in your mind, and uh, what all changes you made uh, after being a student to move into a corporate world? Yeah, so I had to change myself a lot. Yeah, uh, I'll tell you, right? Uh, so I was like already I love programming and you know technical skills. So I was al- always you know adding up to my skill set. Okay, learn anything new comes, learn it, do certification. there was no problem with that like you know uh, see uh, where i struggled is and see everybody is different okay i'm giving you my example but you might have you know different uh, things uh, second thing is like you know uh, having a political awareness okay who's who okay who who all you have in your team right who's the leader and okay. uh, if you have a, a team of 10 people then uh, okay who are the closest one to your leaders who's your super boss what is it he he wants what is he trying to achieve you know uh, as a part of his business priorities company and simple things like you know uh, it's like all about being having that birds eye view or a holistic view i would say so many times like you know in our initial days we tend to focus uh, only on our project only on our work but first thing you should ask is why i am doing this project okay why client is paying me so much to do, to do this project what is it that they, they are trying to achieve and then how can i what are the skills i have 
and how can i contribute to it right beyond my technical uh, day to day work and then you know building those strategic connections with people who are important you may not like necessarily by the way okay hard hard to right but uh, as i said you have to be strategic here so building those strategic partnerships connections knowing uh, what is important from the business standpoint knowing uh, okay where where from where are we getting the revenue what is the amount of revenue your project project is getting like do you have some idea like you know which will let's say increase the revenue or save costs so because everything boils down to money right when it comes to business so that kind of thinking yeah, it took me so many years but this is something you can you know start immediately i would say i would like to request our principal pv mane sir to say something please uh thank you uh, first of all uh, once again i would like to welcome pranya uh, we had uh, met during the alumni meet uh, i don't have any specific questions uh, but uh, i just want to thank you that you have spared your time you have come over here and you coming to the college in itself is a motivation to all the students and the questions which they raise what was in their mind uh, you have aptly answered them and i hope that not only these students but will be watching uh, this uh, video or this session uh, i am sure that they will also gain lot of uh, inputs from what uh, you have talked over here today so with this once again thank you for being with us I, I absolutely sir. agree with sir. I think uh, ma'am has given us uh, wonderful insights into her industrial experience, and we've all learned something from this. So now moving on from the industrial side, we'll come back to our college now. So we've uh, seen what kind of a student you were in college. You were this jolly and introvert also, but you wanted to participate in everything. Are there any regrets from your college time? Regrets? Uh, not at all. not at all yeah i really just that you know like when i was uh, let's say i told you right so first year was good second third year when my marks going down and then when chilla sir like you know reprimanded me about it that's when i had this big regret and that was good because then it also pushed me you know to score well and really like you know balance out other things with my scores so yeah that's and initially right when i started my career na your marks and everything na matters only till you land your first job so when i was uh, looking for a job you know um, like in the midst of it you know where like i am on the final year and okay i don't know like where i'll be joining and okay how my career uh, would be like so that time yeah i was uh, i had this thought okay i don't know you know how my average is uh, is it going to land me you know great opportunity or not and then initial few few years of my life i was stuck into uh, that corporate ladder thing where like okay what is my designation okay you know uh, two years uh, did i get promotion or not but now when i look back like i can see see it's all like you know the system which has been created and it's once you get into that system it's hard uh, for you to get a realistic view uh, because it is designed to in a way you know it is designed so that you put more and more effort they want you to like i for next promotion so they want uh, you to be lured by let's say money status okay that comes with the promotion and then you just start running so basically you start dancing to the, the rhythm and i have done been that so you know i am not saying it's bad yeah there are also benefits to it but i think here uh, the most important thing is having that awareness okay Hey, yes okay when you are in that system yes you have to go by their rules but what is can i do so that i can have my own independence i can have my own life and as i said right how can i live in alignment with what is important to me so like it's all about you know questioning ourselves frequently okay am i living my dream life you know just because i'm getting certain package certain uh, position but does it fulfill me how i am feeling on a day to day basis and if it doesn't fulfill me then can i experiment with something else what is the one thing that you miss the most about college i think there's the extra curricular activities yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is the one thing that you absolutely do not miss <laughs> <laughs> flop 
floppy disk <laughs> <laughs> seriously i'll tell you i mean because i uh, passed out long back right so uh, we had that lab okay in the old building uh, we had a computer lab and <laughs> i still have those floppies you know at my home we used to like anything any reading i have to do i will sit back in college i'll save those papers put it in my floppy disk go home and then i'll read it and it was like so damn slow <laughs> Right now, you just ask AI, okay, what are the you know insights on this topic, and you get the answer. Yes. Right? <laughs> so, yeah, it was like very slow. I remember, but and now I'm I feel very proud that you know we have grown so much, and I, I keep on seeing the updates. You know, so I would like to congratulate you know uh, Manish sir and everybody you know uh, about uh, all the new accreditations like NB accreditation uh, we got and all the new labs that we are opening. So I feel very proud that okay, we have come a long way. You know, now you have accomplished so much and with the current knowledge that you have what is the one advice that you would give to your younger self my younger self yes so uh, i wish i i could have understood you know the importance of mindset early on uh, and also the importance of you know self image it was uh, it took me like you know it was as i said right it was a long journey for me but yeah if uh and uh, what i have learned is there are certain things that you can consciously change so even if you are born with so all of us like you know we carry certain beliefs because you know we uh that's what you know we have been listening since childhood maybe from parents from our environment but uh, i learned pretty late that okay we can consciously change those beliefs we can change you know and it it everything starts from within as in once you change the way you you are thinking about yourself everything else is going to change like you will get new opportunities you will connect with new people and it will open up a new whole world for me so i wish you know i could have learned that early on yes yes definitely <laughs> so um if there are no more questions we'd like to conclude this session with a word of thanks to all the students your enthusiasm and presence has truly made this occasion very special Let's embrace this knowledge which we have gained and strive for excellence. Thank you all for all your valuable contributions. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Principal Sir, Jawri Madam, Dinal Madam, and thanks to all of you for your enthusiastic participation. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. It was wonderful having you here.